Hey everybody, Mr. Anderson here. Welcome back uh, to another edition of Geometry. Uh, today we're in section 7.4. We're going to talk about parallel lines and proportional parts. So let's see what we got today. First of all, our objectives, uh, we're going to use proportional parts within triangles and uh, use uh, proportional parts with parallel lines. Okay, so a lot of this is going to kind of build on what we have uh, done here recently. So first of all, we're going to talk about the triangle proportionality theorem. Um, we had done a few problems like this in the last section where we, in a sense, had a triangle within a triangle. And if you remember, we said, hey, those are similar triangles because they both have A. Angle A is the same. And then if you remember with parallel lines, D and E uh, would be the same. So we have two angles. So triangle ABE is similar to ACD. Um, and so what that meant, meant is their sides were uh, proportional. So the ratio of A to E over A to D would equal A to B over A to C. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes that's easy. But here's another way that we can approach this that sometimes will make this a lot more easy. Um, what this triangle proportionality theorem says here is if these two lines are parallel, BE and CD, then what's proportional or what we can make uh, a ratio and set it equal to another ratio is not AB over AC, but we can do AB over BC. So if you notice, that's what's happening here, AB over BC. So you've got this section here, this section here over just that little section, okay? And then AE, this whole thing here. So you have this whole thing, I'll do it that way, over that little part. And then you've got the whole AE over just DE here. Okay, so sometimes that's going to be a lot easier. And hopefully I'll have an example that I'll show you where it's going to be easier. So so this is another way we can do it. You might have done this accidentally uh, in the last section and, um, and found out you got the correct answer. Whoops. All right, so let's take a look. First example here. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, it says RT is parallel to VU. And it's marked here, so we're good there. SV is 3. That's marked. VR is 8. That's marked. UT is 12. All right, we're trying to find... Uh, SU, that's what they've got marked as X. So the way we would have had to have done it before, here I'm going to do this just to show you, I won't do this every time, but the old way, as we say, here's the old way, we would have had to do what? We would have had to make a ratio of, like we could have said 3 over 8 plus 3, which would be 11, would equal what? X over x plus 12. It's not super hard. That would be doable. But you notice what we'd have to do is we'd have to, when we cross um, multiply here, we'd have to distribute that 3. Okay, it's not super hard. But what we can do now is the new way. Yay, yay, yay. Smiley face. Um, the new way would be just to say 3 over 8 could equal x over 12. And I think you can kind of see this is going to be a little bit easier to do than this. And there are times where it could be even more easy. Um, you know, in this case, it's not this old way. It's not really all that bad. But we, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing here for a while, cross multiply. So 8x equals 3 times 12. So 8x equals 36, and divide by 8. So it looks like, this is not going to come out evenly here, but um, 4.5. So x is 4.5, which is also SU, the way that this is. I'm going to do it this way. Oop, OK. So SU is 4.5. If you uh, if you would have worked this way out over here, you you should find that x will also be 4.5. It'll just take you a little bit longer to find that. So this is a, a little bit of a shortcut, or this can be a shortcut. So this is why this is kind of nice to know. Um, the uh, next thing is it's really the same thing, but it's it's the 
Converse, and remember the Converse doesn't mean, oh, this is a certain kind of shoe, um, you know, Converse, Chuck Taylors. Um, no, the Converse is like the opposite of it. And so really the Converse of this just says, um, if we know that those um, sides AE over EB is equal to CD over DB, if we can find that that's true, then we know that the lines have to be parallel. So it's just kind of coming at it from the opposite side and so we'll take a look at a few quick examples there and see how we can make that. So notice, notice now here, it doesn't tell us that GH is, is a parallel to FE. It's saying, is it? Okay, so in order to make this, these two lines parallel, we have to make uh, a proportion like DG over GF. Let's, let's write this here. DG over GF has to equal DH over HE. Okay, so if we can show that this is true, then uh, we'll know that they're parallel. Well, what do we have? Let's plug in what we have. We know DH is 18 and HE is 36. So, oh, we know this side of it, right? So we've got 18 over 36. Well, what about the DG and the GF? It doesn't actually give us numbers for that like we had with DH and HE. But if you notice, it does give us this thing here. It says DG is one half of GF. Now you say, okay, well, what does that mean? Or what would that, how would that work? Well, here's the thing is, um, just think about what that means. That means if you know what DG is, it has to be half whatever GF is and half of that, right? So in other words, that means like if, I'm just gonna pick some numbers here, just so you can see it better. But let's say if GF was four, what if I said GF is four? What would DG have to be? Half four times one half, which would make DG two, wouldn't it? So in other words, no matter what numbers you pick, if GF was six, DG would be three. So, or if it was eight and four, 10 and five, so forth. But you see every combination of those where, where um, DG is half the length of GF, what's that ratio come out to be every time when we simplify it? Two over four, which would equal one over two, right? So this would be one over two when we simplify it. In other words, if you notice here, there's the one half times GF if you had one third times GF, guess what? The ratio would be one third, okay? So I just showed you this to kind of let you see see how that looks, but it's gonna be that fraction in front there if they write it this way. Uh, could we simplify 18 over 36? What could we divide by? Well, if you're really, really good, you could say, hey, they could both divide by 18. You could do that right away, which would make this one over two. And then you see, hey, look at that. It's the same ratio. And so we can say, yes, those uh, two lines, GH and FE, are parallel, okay? Because we got the same ratio uh, from the sides there, okay? All right, let's look at this one. Just, just so you can kind of see it a, a little bit different way. We're doing the same thing, just looking at the ratio there. So let's look at the ratio of WA over AZ and see if that equals xy over yz. This time you notice we've got all the numbers here, so it'd be actually easier. We can just plug this in. WA is 18. 18 over az, 32. Does that equal, will that equal, question mark, uh, xy, 15 over yz, 25. Okay, well, let's just simplify them. So here's what we're here's what we're working with. Let's let's simplify them. If I have 18 over 32, what could I divide? Wow. Okay, not sure what I was trying to do there, but I'm going to make these two little division signs. Okay. Um, wow. What can we divide by here on both of those? We could divide by two, perhaps. Two and two. So this would be nine over 16. Can we simplify that any further? Nine can divide by three. Can 16 divide by three? Nope. 16 can divide by two or four. Can it divide by, can nine do that? No. So it looks like we're stuck with nine sixteenths. And then we're gonna say, well, does that equal 
15 over 25. Here we can divide by 5, right? So this would be 3 fifths. Hmm. Is 9 sixteenths the same as 3 fifths? No, it is not. So this is what it would look like um, if your lines are not parallel. The two ratios would not be equal. So in this case, we would have to say, nope, these lines are not parallel. Okay? All right, the mid-segment theorem. All right, the mid-segment theorem, this is actually uh, kind of a, a nice one here. Um, the mid-segment, we talked about a while back, the mid-segment of a, an isosceles, well, I think any kind of a trapezoid, but also isosceles. Mid-segment, if you remember, um, it's parallel to this side. So these are parallel. A mid-segment is parallel to this other side. Um, remember, the endpoints, J and K, are exactly halfway up these other sides. So K is the midpoint of HG. J is the midpoint of FH. Um, so therefore, that makes FJ equal to JH and HK equal to KG. And the other thing that's really uh, neat about this is the length of JK is one half the length of FG. So that's this part right here. So JK is one half the length of FG. So for example, we'll do an example in a second, but if, if it's really easy. If FG was 10, let's say, JK would be 5. That's, that's kind of all we're doing there. Pretty easy. Okay, let's take a look at a quick example, or three-part example. How about that? All right, um, DE is a mid-segment. EF is a mid-segment. Okay, so both of these two lines here are mid-segments. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. So let's see what we got. Find AB. Well, AB is what? Here's AB. There's AB. We're trying to find that length. Well. Look at the triangle here with this as the mid-segment. Well, that's the mid-segment, which is 5, right? So if this is 5, what would AB have to be? Twice as long, right? So that means AB would have to be 10. All right, so let's find FE. Well, where's FE? Mm, here's F. I kind of hit it a little bit there. FE is now that part. So now look at this triangle with this being the mid-segment. Segment. We don't know what that is, but if you look, this whole side out here is 18. And so this mid-segment would be half, half the length of that, so that means Fe would be 9. All right, now we hadn't really talked about this, but as they say, I think in kindergarten or something, put on your thinking caps. Okay, um, AFE, angle AFE. Angle AFE is this angle right here that I've kind of written over, but is this angle right in here? How would I figure out what that angle is? Okay, if you think back to um, remember early, early, early in the year, uh, we talked about parallel lines. And remember, mid segment is parallel. Okay, so look at DE as the mid segment. This line here, oops, I'm going to try to write an arrow here without this. That and that, those two lines are parallel, right? And so, because that's what a mid-segment is. So if you look, there are two parallel lines. There is a line that splits those two parallel lines. Do you remember, and we talked about this recently here as well, um, the alternate interior angles. Remember, alternate interior angles. And so remember, alternate interior angles are the angles that are in between the two parallel lines, but on opposite sides of this line that cuts through the parallel line. So if this is 87 here, over here will be 87 degrees as well. And so that means this would equal 87. Okay? So yeah, remember that alternate interior angles. That comes in handy. That comes up a lot. So hopefully you can re remember that going forward. Okay. Proportional parts of parallel lines, very, very similar to what we're talking about with triangles, okay? So a lot of the similar things. The only thing that's different is you kind of don't quite make a triangle. It's like almost a triangle, but if you notice this line and this line, and then you've got here, and then, you know, eventually they do come, if these lines come together, they do eventually make a triangle. It's just you've got this extra line in here, but 
it kind of works the same way. All right, so what's happening is here, if, if you have two lines that cut across three or more parallel lines, the transversals, or in this case, like line AC and line EG, um, they get cut up. Everything on that side is proportional, okay? So let's say, for example, um, well, as they gave it here, these are all parallel, A, E, B, F, C, G. And then A, B, this part here over B, C is parallel or is equal to E, F over F, G. It's really similar to what we just did in the triangle. The only difference was, like, instead of having this third parallel line here, these two lines would have come together at a point, but it looks exactly the same way, okay? So let's see what we can do here. Here's a little map. Uh, I don't know what town this is in, but um, Davis, Broad, and Main Streets are parallel, okay? So here's Davis, Broad, and Main. These are all parallel lines. Um, and then uh, it gives us some distances here, and we want to find X. So we want to find the distance between Broad and Main on Bridgeview Street, so this X right here. So just like this, what, like we did a few minutes ago in a, in a triangle, we can just uh, set up a proportion here. So either way you do it um, is okay. Um, just keep it the same each time. So I'm going to start with 8 over 24 is what I'm going to do here. So if I do 8 over 24, that means what has to match up with the 8 is the X here, okay? So I do 8 over 24, I have to do X over 15. That's my proportion. Now I'm just going to solve that. So cross multiply, just like we've been doing. So 24X equals 8 times 15. So 24X equals 8 times 15, which is 120. Divide by 24. And it looks like X is 5. So we've got 5 miles. I'm going to try to make that a little more like a 5. All right, 5. It works the same way as the um, triangles. The, um, the other thing that kind of plays off of this is here, if you have these parallel lines, and it makes one side like AB is congruent to BC, well then EF has to be congruent to FG as well, is basically what it's saying. And if you think about it, it makes sense. What did we just talk about? We said the ratios are the same or proportional. So if AB is congruent to BC, let's say it's, that means if this was five, that would be five. Five over five is a ratio of one, one to one. And so whatever EF and FG is, to get a ratio of one to one, they would have to be the same as well, wouldn't they? So it, it's just really just a kind of a slight um, uh, takeoff on what we just talked about there. So how about this? I think this is our last problem here as well, if I, if I remember correctly. Find X and Y. So you look at this, you go, hey, you know what? Three parallel lines. Well, it tells us that these two are congruent. So, well, that's kind of easy to go, well, if, I, if those are congruent, I know that 3x minus 7 has to equal x plus 5. And I just solved this, right? We've probably done something like this many times. Plus 7, plus 7, 2x equals 12, divide by 2, x is 6, yay. Okay, x is 6. Well, what about with the y's? Well, as we just said, that they're not marked as being congruent, but because these are parallel and because these are congruent, these two have to be congruent. So if we want to, we can put little uh, two mark uh, things there to show that they're congruent. And so then I just make 9y minus 2 equal to 6y plus 4. And then we solve that one. So minus 6y plus 2 so 3y equals 6, divide by 3, y equals 2. That's it, okay? 
So um, hopefully that wasn't too bad today. I'm going to check just to make sure. Good. Okay, nothing left. Um, appreciate you being here. Uh, hopefully that all made sense today. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time when we talk about Section 7.5. We'll see you later. Bye.